Hi, I am Hyo Jung Baek from UCSF. It is great honor to me that I can present my recent public case in this great conference. And it is also a good opportunity to me because in my drug processing work, I use a relatively new type of data in bioinformatics field, which is electronic medical record called EMR. So I would represent our works and also like to introduce the new type of data. So drug repositioning is a strategy for a drug development and simply just adding a new indication on an existing drug, people expected that we can increase the success rate of drug, drug development in shorter time. So there are over a thousand repositioning paper have been published and by the technical advance in molecular biology and bioinformatics areas, the majority of the computational repositioning paper utilize genomics or omics data, such as the gene expression profiles and proteomics and pathways. However, the patient-drived clinical phenotypes, such as a side effect, is one of the key of the drug repositioning. For example, we know the successful story of drug repositioning Viagra. It is so originally developed as a cardiovascular drug. By the, by the phenotype report of human volunteer, it repurposed for other diseases. So my question is that can you make a systematic pipeline for drug repositioning based on the clinical phenotype of patients? Of patients. However, it seems hard to get a large scale screening results for a patient's clinical phenotype. For the reason we think about EMRs as a potential resource for, for large-scale patient-level clinical information. In short, EMR is a digitalized medical record for billing purpose. In 2014, over 85% of doctors use EMR system in the U.S. For the reason, it is already popular and we already have plenty of data. So what kind of data in there and what kind of data we use for drug repression? So let's imagine the, what happens when a patient visited hospital. First, a doctor will diagnose a patient and a doctor will assign a drug prescription for that patient. So if it is needed, some lab tests like a blood glucose level will measure a clinical phenotype of patients. So there is the three types of data can be exist in EMR system. The disease condition of each patient, what kind of drug were pres prescribed for each patient, and their lab test results are already stored in EMR system. We will use these three types three type of information in the hospital record for our drug retention work. In our study, we used the EMR from a single tertiary hospital of, of Korea. It is a very longitudinal, cover 13 years, and patient only record, and inpatient only record. And total number of patients in that data is over 500,000. There's 1.1 million inpatient record stored, and there's over 9 million lab test results already stored. We used all, all of these data for our reporting. So I extract drug or disease associated labs from EMRs for our reporting work. While there are over 100 types of lab measurements method in that EMR system, we've used general types of lab, which means over half of patients were tested. So what we did with these general lab, let's imagine the timeline. During hospitalizations, several lab tests and drug treats will be happened. I selected the first lab in the first admission with the specific disease before any drug treatment and that lab is used as a disease associated lab. For the drug associated lab, I use the entire lab its perturbation during, during drug treatment. For example, there is a lab for measuring inflammations in the blood. By treatment of anti-inflammation drug, that lab will go down to normal level. So I use the change level of lab as a drug associated clinical signature. Now we know the concept to characterize drug and disease, disease using clinical signatures in EMRs. In my works, the guilt by association rule was applied to compare the drug or disease for drug repositioning. Using bipartite, bipartite, 
bipartite network frame, we can directly describe our questions. There are two types of node. One is a drug, and other one is disease. If drug I has an indication for disease J, we will draw on edge. So the drug representing based on guilt by association rule is a problem to finding true edge between drug node and disease node. The graph in the right side might give you a visual understanding. There is a correlated pair of drug and disease, and we are going to, to ask whether there is a true edge. First, we will try to find a similar drug for a correlated drug, and also try to find a similar disease for a correlated diseases. Then we will check whether the similar drug and disease have a true edge. If yes, I will draw an edge between a correlated drug and disease because a similar pair has a true edge. That's a guilt by association rule outline. In our data set, we have a 691 drug and 425 diseases, and there are over 17,000 edges, which are extracted from EMRs and public resources. This slide will give a basic concept how can we find the most similar drug pair or disease pair, and also describe the calculation of, of edge scores. There are two similar rank matrices, for drug-drug pair and disease-disease pair. So the yellow wet matrix is for drug pair, and the orange one is for the disease pair. So then similarity rank, rank matrix can be established based on the labs in the EMR as, as I described before, and you know, other genomic features. For genomic feature, I will introduce in later. So let's focus on the overall method. There are similarity rank matrices, and imagine there are correlated pair drug I and disease J, I mentioned in, in the middle of the slide. We are going to calculate the edge score between them called EIJ. First, we detect the drug large X and disease Y as their similar pairs with their specific similarity rank value in that matrix. After that, we calculate the geometric means of these identified similarity rank values. If drug X and disease Y, the most similar pair is a known one, the geometric value will multiply by one and edge score will go high. So if not, we will multiply by zero and final edge score will go to zero. So as you can expect, in this pipeline, similarity mat matrix is a key feature. So I will explain how we compare the distribution of lab to redefine the similarity between drugs and disease. Again, we use the EMRs from the single university hospital. While there are 100 types of lab, I just share general labs. And as I mentioned before, we select the disease associated clinical feature based on the lab and drug associated fe clinical feature based on the perturbations of the lab. And we, we, will we can compare the distributions of, of each pair of drug or each pair of disease using Wilcoxon rank test. Then we will have a p-value of a similarity between drug and between disease based on the lab, okay? And this is the result of disease disease similarity by the distributions of lab using EMR of hours. I will show you the disease related results only in this presentation, which is more easy to understand. Here are two heat map. Each row is a disease, and columns are same set of disease. If there's a red color dot, that means a compared set of disease have a significantly similar distributions of certain lab measurements. The heat map in the upper side is compared dis distributions of ESL levels among diseases. ESL is a very general lab, which can represent the inflammations in the blood, anemia and other hematological diseases like uh, leukemia. So as you can see, the right side in the heat map, there's a cluster of hematological and inflammation disease based on the distributions of EMR. We also cluster the for the same set of this in upper side. In the down heat map is a cluster result with for the same set of disease based on the total cluster level. There's a different cluster set of disease the cluster diseases are endocrine, metabolic, and immune disease like diabetes. So, oh. so we can say that while the selected disease associated lab in the cleaning might be a little bit noisy, 
but the overall distrib distributions of that can represent the similarity of disease. Okay, and we also confirm the, the same trend already exists in the drug-related labs. Okay. Okay. In addition, we define the genomic similarity between drug-drug and disease-disease pair. By the limitation of the presentation time, I will briefly introduce about genomic part of my work. We determine a set of genes which are associated with drug or disease using public resources like OMIM or some drug banks. And then we determine the similarity of a gene set associated to your term using that paper. And in, in addition, PPI similarity methods were also used based on my previous work. The basic concept of my pre previous work is a measuring degree of overlap between two networks. After the calculation of similarity using zero terms and PPI, I've made a unified similarity matrix by selecting the maximum value among them. So to construct the similarity matrix for disease, we utilize two different features. So the, in my prediction pipeline called ClinDR, we calculate edge score twice. So one is based on the clinical signature, other one is based on the genomic signature based matrices. So the PG in the right side is a predicted edge score based on the genomic signature. And PC is predicted at this score based on the clinical feature, as I mentioned before. In, in summarize, the clinical we summarize maker using the summarization function F in the bottom will take a kind of average value between PG and PC with a weighting factor for PG. After that, we conducted the pipelines and also evaluate its performance using fourfold cost validation. The overall LSU of our method, ClinDR, is 0 0.76, which is fine level, I think. However, when we use a genomic feature only, the overall AUC is almost random. So the clinical features for the EMR is a major contributor for that performance of ours. When we com combine all clinical and genomic information, the ClinDR shows the best prediction result. In addition, we also examined the enrichment of ongoing clinical trial among the prediction results. The p-value of hypergeometric trace is so significant, but we, when, you, when you use only genomic feature, it is not significant. But again, when you combine all clinical, all genomic feature, we can see the best results. Therefore, the combination of clinical and genomic features are needed for the best result. The top scored True edges between drug and diseases in ours is almost non pair and it makes sense. Interestingly, out of them, you find the unexpected drug and disease pair with high edge score. That is a turbotine surface. It is known as the asthma drug, has a true edge with ALS. So, in previous slide, I already described the ALS. I will skip most of the phenotype of ALS. So, so based on our prediction, we examined therapeutic effects of turbotine surface using ALS model in zebrafish. There are two major types of model. One is SOD1 mutation, and other one, second one is a TDP43. By feasibility of issue, we use, we experimentally validate using TDP43 mutated zebrafish model. The figures present a phenotype of wild type and TDP43. As you can see, in the mutant, there are severe breakage, uh, severe breakage of motor axons. The, in first experiment, we, tried, treated, we tested the neuroprotective neuro effect of turbotine surface. And second, we tested the rescue of axonal breakage by treating turbotine surface. After the, by treating turbotine surface after the axon outgrowth, which is 36 hours post fertilization of zebrafish called HPF. All pictures in my experiment were captured in 72 hours post fertilization. So the upper figure, upper white figure, is a motor axon in wild type. The white horizontal line is a spinal cord of zebrafish and there is a no breakage in branched motor axons. 
However, the right neighbor panel utility mutant cases, the branched motor axons from the spinal cord are totally broken. And the third panel is turbotalin circuit treated in the wild type. As you know, it is already approved drug, there's no harm. So, and the down figures are treated re results in turb result of turbotalin surface in TDPS3 mutated cases in different doses. Please remember that the dose of the drug indeed is the concentrations in the fish tank. So the actual intake dose might be much less. So, and the bottom, bottom line, there is a different dose. And as you can see, in the highest dose is one millimeter of turbotide surface. It, it shows best results for the neural protections. So we can say it is hazard neural protective effect. This panel shall summarize the statistic value of a previous experiment. Y-axis is the count of axonal defect in each condition, and gray bar is for the wild type. And red bar is for the mutant cases. And first red bar is number of axonal defect in mutant without any drugs. And other three bars is a drug treated result by different dose. As you can see, we can see from that result, we can say turbotine surface has a neural protection effect for ALS. We also tested the rescue effect, it works. And other, our next question whether it is on target effects or off target effects. Turbotine surface is known beta-2 androgen receptor. And we found that there is a known antagonist called butoxamine. So my assumption is that if turbotine surface plus butoxamine has no therapeutic effect, it is on target effect. And the result is the bottom line is marked in F. It is a turbotine surface plus butoxamine in mutant cases. As you can see, it loses the therapeutic effect. Okay, so, so, and the, it is a bar chart representing related statistics. Therefore, the therapeutic potential of turpentine surface for ALS is based on the on-target effect. In addition, we also tested the same experiment using another ALS model called SOD1. We can't see any therapeutic effects because the pass, related pathway between SOD1 and TDP43 is not overlapped at all. So, in summary, turbotine surface is a promising drug reproduction candidate for ALS patient with TDP43 mutant cases. In addition, beta-2 energy receptor is a novel target for ALS. For that reason, our collaborator, a bench scientist, start their new project, which is of the biological mechanism study. And it is summary. So, medical record can be that were routinely gathered for billings can be repurposed for biomedical research. For example, EMRs can be used or large-scale repository for patient-driven clinical phenotypes. Clinical phenotype from EMR is a major contributor of our predictor, and we also find a promising candidate for ALS patients and also find a new target of ALS patients. So now we saw the example of study for reuse of EMR for drug influenza. It is another possible reuse cases. Yeah, I think EMR can be used risk stratification of patients for tailored clinical decisions. If we can make a pattern of debilitating process of patients, like a temporal order of disease comorbidity before they died, it allows a personalized risk, risk stratification and prevention strategies. So my question in current projects in the pink box, what are the pattern of develop disease process lead to fatal outcome for patient in hospital? So I modeled the clinical timeline via multiple disease progression leading to death, which is held among patients. To do that, we reuse a large scale longitudinal healthcare record covering 10.4 million patients in the whole US hospital. By tracking sequential order of diagnosis of patient, we can build a death trajectory, a directional, like a directional network graph like this. In this model, there's a circle, it is a disease, and square is a death. If there's a significant shared pattern among the patient, we will draw the directional edges. So in this trajectory, the first disease is heart failure, and second one is acute kidney failure, and some of them died. From that surviving population, patients diagnosed other, other disease and then died. So 
Based on our trajectory approach, we dynamically visualize all of these patient trajectory. While it shows some disease progress and suffering process and their death, it is so beautiful, ironically. So please prepare your iPhone to take my video. So it is there. What can I say? I think we have, I have an accident. As you can see, the circle is disease and square is death. And there's a real traffic of patients to, from the disease to disease and other disease and finally died. And blue colored edge is a real traffic of young patients. And red colored one is a real death to, heading to death traffic of elder patients. We can visualize all of them within 30 seconds and is a Google map of disease, from the disease to death in US hospital. So thank you for listening. This is my acknowledgement and any comments and questions will be welcome.